Oh, hey, today I'm gonna to teach you five secrets on how to get faster. So you're running away from everyone on the footy field or whatever sport you play, do these five secrets and you'll be the quickest in the world. Maybe not as quick as Usain Bolt, but you'll be pretty quick. The first secret, you're not gonna like it, plyometrics. No one really loves doing plyometrics. But if you do these following exercises, the explosive power within your legs is gonna be so much better than anyone else's that you're just gonna explode with your speed. Try these five plyometric exercises in your next workout. The next secret to develop your speed is falling sprints. Now you may be asking, what in the world is a falling sprint? Basically, in sports such as footy, the first five to 10 meters of sprinting is the most important. So that's what we need to develop the most in regards to our speed. So a falling sprint is essentially, you're leaning forward, you're falling forward, and the point where about to fall, you sprint. Right? So this is gonna really help you explode from stationary in the game. For example, falling, falling, falling. So now that you know how to do your fallout sprints, how are you gonna implement them? You need to try this workout, this workout, put it up. This workout, <laughs> take the fifth. This workout right here, 330 meter sprints, 340 meters, 350s and 360s. You literally sprint out and then walk back. And every single time you fall out into that sprint. So many people try to do a billion different strengthening and plyometric exercises which we do recommend a few, but the only way to actually get faster is to run at 100%. Think about it, how are you gonna get better at soccer? You're not gonna get better at soccer by playing baseball. Realistically, it's not gonna work. So, how are you gonna get faster? Stop sprinting at 90%. Stop sprinting at 95%. Sprint at 100%, bro. Okay, bro, I just want to quickly give you a tip to improve your running ability as well. As you can see in this footage here, I want you to look at my hip drive. So my hip drive is hitting 90 degrees. This means you can stay nice and upright. This allows you to decrease your stride length and increase your cadence. So you're ticking over your legs faster and your ground contact time is decreased. The less amount of time that you spend on the ground, the more distance that you're going to cover. The third secret to getting faster, which is going to be a unique one to all of you back at home, is shadow ones. Now, what people neglect is the change of direction, which is so specific to pretty much any team sport, including footy. Almost like a beep test in a sense, but you're actually gonna be going hard and you're gonna be trying to change that direction quick. As you can see, if you do 10 of these shuttle runs, you're gonna be pretty gassed out. On the footy field, this exercise alone has helped me burst away from so many packs. Just being able to quickly change direction. Like if you think about it, how many times are you just running straight with the ball? So you're always turning agility. So you gotta be good at stopping, changing direction, and then launching the other way. So make sure you're alternating sides that you change direction. After all the plyometric and strengthening exercises, you should be pretty good by now. You should be pretty nimble on your feet. The next secret that you need to be doing every week is fatigue sprinting. The chances are you're not going to go to the Olympics for a 100 meter dash. You're not up against Usain Bolt. It's not happening. You're playing team sport. And what happens in team sport? You're never gonna run out and be 100% fresh. You're gonna be fatigued. You've just gone for four contests. This 200 kilo ruckman has just cleaned you up. You're feeling pretty fatigued. You're on the ground. You gotta get up and sprint again. So that is the importance of trying the workout that we did earlier of 330s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, sprinting repeatedly under fatigue. It is so important. Gas yourself, do an aerobic session, and then after the aerobic session, do some sprints. The final secret, what could it possibly be? What could it possibly be? We're gonna have to take you guys to the Lambo's residence to show you guys this one. Oh hey, we're back to the Lambo's residence from the athletics track. And you may be wondering, why am I sitting with a barbell over me? Well boys, 
The first exercise that you need to do for explosive power to increase your speed is explosive hip thrust. What you want to do is knees at 90 degrees, explode up all the way into extension, and then a slow eccentric. Explode, slow eccentric. When you're sprinting, you want to focus on an upright posture where your hip extensors are strong and coming through. So what we want to do here is an explosive RDL. Now, a lot of people are thinking, why not the deadlift? Your risk of injury is going to be so much greater with the deadlift. Whereas with an RDL, you can focus solely on building your hip extensor strength. Make sure you bend your knees to pick up the bar. We go forward, keep our back straight and explode. Make sure you're keeping that pressure on your hamstrings. And then as soon as it starts to come off, you explode up. Okay, so finally, I'm gonna give you a bonus exercise. So if you're watching this video, you are absolutely blessed right now. If you know Lambros well at all, you know that he sprints a lot. And when you sprint a lot, the chances are that your hammies every now and then you're gonna tweak. I've had hammy issues in the past. And what's the easiest way to avoid them? The Nordic. If you can do three sets of six and build this up to three times a week, your hamstrings are gonna be stronger than an ox. What you want to do is you want to go as low as possible if you can hold weight, but my hamstrings aren't that strong before we have to release it and catch ourselves. And as I said, eccentrically loading those hamstrings with extreme amounts of load going through them is going to be prime for your running. Your running. <laughs> so without further ado, let's take you back to the athletic track. So I know you want to see us run. I know you want to see us sprint. And I know you want to see what Lambo has got in the 100 meter dash. Ready, set. Go! 100 meter dash is done. I don't actually know what time I run. Look, in my opinion, anything under 12 is pretty elite. If you can run a sub 12 100 meter sprint, that's pretty impressive. And then a sub <laughs> was 82 milliseconds <laughs> and 11 seconds so under 12 unbelievable time okay. and mate you're lucky i didn't have the marathon on sunday because otherwise i reckon i'd be I can let me push in 11. <laughs> can you actually get your watch in here too? Yeah, there we've got it's it. 11, 82, yeah. Bro, I'm, I'm pretty actually happy with that, honestly. I think I've ran maybe an 11.4, 11.5 before back in my heyday, but I don't really ever do sprinting at the athletic track anymore anyway, so it's a bit different. It is so cold and windy. We weren't even going to film today because it was that windy, but we thought, you know, why not? The fans have got to see it. They want to know the five secrets to sprint faster. I hate you, bro. It is so cold. Let's go! Let's go! Cold, unbelievably cold. Make ourselves even more much harder. I'm trying myself in the Gold Coast Mara Tower, which is uh, quite small. There is absolutely nothing in this world better than the cold, so salty ocean for your recovery. How cold was that? I think I was not even dry. That tower did nothing, but the benefits that you're going to get for your recovery, you just got to get it done. As much as it sucks, just get it done. I agree. I don't think. I'll be having the go-to iced coffee today. <laughs> I've already asked Locke that question. Are you going with the go-to iced coffee? <laughs> no way, man. I can't have an iced coffee now. I reckon I'll actually freeze to death. It is that cold right now in Melbourne. I don't know what's going on here. We're coming into, you know, summer almost, and it's still bloody freezing outside. Okay, it is breakfast time. Now, we are going to indulge in breakfast. I usually have a coffee, but I've already had one this morning, so... I'm not gonna chuck in my usual regular bee juice into that coffee. I actually got a coffee out 
with honey in it. So let me know in the comments below if you do that as well. You have to try it. It makes it so much better. But anyways, I'm gonna show you guys this breakfast. As you guys know, on this channel, we do not use any type of seed oil. So make sure that you're not cooking in vegetable oil, cook in pure butter. So the stuff out of the tin foil is very good and just slap it on there. It's really important for your hormones, your testosterone levels to have authentic butter and so good. Next thing we have is five eggs. Let's see how I go cracking these bad boys. Yeah, that was good. Cooking eggs is the easiest things and you can mix them up. That's why they're so good because you can do scrambled omelets, fried. I mean, I'll admit I did try to do poached eggs for a little while there and I got really good at it, but I was butchering like one in three eggs. So it just wasn't worth at all. But that's pretty much it guys. Five eggs in a pan. The secret is to put on one of these over the top so it cooks all the way through and doesn't burn on the bottom. So leave that for about two and a half minutes and I'll see you on the other side. Moment of truth, please, please, please be good. Come on. Ooh, that is looking beautiful. That is actually perfect. Let's get that right off. Five eggs, boys. This is going to be unbelievable. Okay, breakfast is complete. We have five eggs here, half an avocado with lots of salt because we need to replenish those electrolytes we lost during the sprint session. We also have some fruit here. So just a variety with 100% pure peanut, peanut butter. Very, very important to get those fats in. You're probably wondering why the hell were we grappling and fighting on the beach? We weren't doing this because we hate each other. We weren't, believe it or not. We're actually doing this because there is really good evidence behind exerting yourself in a competitive nature can actually help boost testosterone and hormone levels positively. For example, if you're grappling one of your best mates, like you're just going at it, you are literally so free. Like you're in a flow state. You're not worried about what happened yesterday. You're just worried about how you're gonna get him down your next move. And this just increases that fight or flight response and gets you so primed. So that's why we were doing it. We weren't just trying to belt the absolute living daylights out of each other. Anyway, so I'm gonna enjoy this. I'm gonna smash it down. And guys, you need to start having breakfasts like this because as I started one year ago, this is what I looked like before. And this is what I look like now after eating this much every single morning for breakfast. So get those calories in and get the protein in. Let's get it. Hey, welcome to the end of the video. Firstly, please subscribe because only about 29% of you guys watching this video right now are subscribed. And we're trying to get to 5K by the end of this year. That would be absolutely massive. Secondly, we just launched a 60 day fitness challenge. So if you think that you're pretty fit and you want to take your footy and your physique to the next level, get shredded six pack abs for summer, join this 60 day challenge. It's the first link in the description. And it is absolutely epic. In this community, we're actually going to do meetups. We're going to do all types of things. And my gosh, is it going to be amazing. Whoa.